I've been thinking a lot lately about the power of being connected, the benefit of being able to ask questions and get answers from folks beyond the perimeter of my school. Plenty of other professions subscribe to a networking philosophy of doing business, but for some reason, teaching has historically been one of the most isolating careers. It's quite the paradox if you think about it. The typical secondary teacher sees around 180 students each day, and yet isolation and alienation rank among the top reasons that we lose teachers each year. Many of us can relate. On a busy day, I can easily go from bell to bell without interacting with another adult. But here's the thing. Educators also understand the power of participating in supportive communities of practice. It's why attending conferences leaves us on a learning high or why reading a great professional text makes us feel empowered to sharpen our skills and expand our repertoires. At the core, communities of practice link us to others who share our occupation and who can lighten the load of the work we do. Not surprising, many of these communities are now online. Like many of you, I use Facebook to connect with friends and family, to post pictures, peruse recipes, share news, but I also use Twitter to connect professionally, to pose questions, to peruse lessons, and to share ideas. Here's why. If the 50 most interesting educators you knew were going to be speaking at a conference in your hometown, wouldn't you want to go hear them? What if you could follow them on Twitter? People you admire in education are already online. Teachers who teach the same material that you do are there too. They're sharing resources and ideas and collaborating to make themselves better. It's time to get started. It's time we build a wider network. Your first step is to create an account. Choose your handle or your online name carefully. It will represent you professionally online. For Twitter, you'll want a short handle because your name will be included in your tweets and retweets. And hey, you only get 140 characters per tweet. Next, you're going to add a photo and a bio. I'm always wary of profiles with no personal information because they're often spammers. Educators are unlikely to follow you back if you don't look like a real person or say anything about yourself. Mention your role in education, your geographic area, and maybe some topics that interest you. Next up is notifications. Unfortunately, the default setting for notifications is usually all on. This will for sure clog your inbox and is likely to frustrate you. So instead, navigate into your account settings and look for notifications. Only leave on those that let you know when somebody specifically mentions you or sends you a message. Remember, Twitter is public. Anyone can see your posts if they know what to search for, even if they're not actually following you. So don't post anything that you wouldn't say publicly in a professional setting. Avoid complaining and try to focus instead on the positive. Never, ever post about specific students or colleagues. Many users initially want to set their account to be private, but it's pretty darn impossible to be part of the larger online educational community if nobody can see you. Plus, if you keep your post professional and avoid mentioning specific personal details, there wouldn't be a reason for you to have a private account anyway. Social media has definitely added some new words to our vocabulary, and often things are abbreviated because characters are limited. As I mentioned before, Twitter only gives you 140 characters, including punctuation and spaces, to post your ideas, your links, and your images. So when it comes to Twitter lingo, let me give you the top three must-know terms. The first one is the hashtag. Hashtags are just labels that organize conversations by a topic or a theme. Try clicking on a tweet that has a word with a hashtag in in front. Click on the tagged word and it should give you a list of content with the same tag, like hashtag edtechchat. At. The at symbol is a public mention of the person or organization with that Twitter handle. If you start a tweet with at, it gets seen only by people who follow both you and that person. Use a period first and then the at to mention someone and have all of your followers automatically see it too. The two circular arrows signify a retweet. Retweeting is simply reposting someone else's message to your timeline so that your followers can see it too. Tweets show the number of times they have been retweeted, so often retweeting is a way to show support for an idea or agreement with a colleague online. Okay, let's put it all together. This tweet's from me, Diana. My handle is on there too, at Dean Eby. And then there's my comment about the story of the little blue bird who changed my teaching. 
That's followed by a link to my story. Finally, I tagged it EdTechChat and California Ed Chat in my tweet. Now that you've got the lingo, it's time to get reading. Twitter starts off like a stream. As people post their thoughts and articles and ideas, tweets will begin to populate the feed on your homepage. The more people you follow, the more tweets you'll see and the more insights you'll be able to access. But as you start to follow more people, the stream will become like a river. You don't need to absorb it all. In fact, you probably can't. You don't need to see or read every tweet that goes by. For now, just check in a couple times a day. I know what you're thinking. When will I have time for all of this? Sometimes I snag a couple minutes to check in with my professional learning network while waiting for the department meeting to start or for a pot of water to come to boil for a mug of tea. It's a few minutes here and a few minutes there, but it's actually usually enough to stay connected. On days when I feel like I could really use the support or I have a great story to offer, I'll carve out 10 minutes or so to read Twitter as my morning paper. It may be a cliche, but our profession needs your voice in the conversation. As educators, we need to share what's working and work together to solve what isn't. That process can happen only if there are dedicated teachers who come to the table to offer their ideas, their experiments, their victories, and their challenges. I hope to see you online. Ideas and language for this Pecha Kucha presentation come from Power Up, making the shift to -to one-to-one teaching and learning by me, Diana Neeby, and my awesome co-author, Jen Roberts, published by Stenhouse Copyright 2015. You can follow us on Twitter under the handles at dneeby and at jenroberts1, and follow our conversations about teaching and learning with one-to-one technology at hashtag PowerUpEd.